Lord, today we have come to you. Show us the way. Teach us your will. Pour into us. In Jesus' mighty name. Have we prayed? Somebody shout a big amen. I was thinking the other day and two words popped in my spirit. As people of God, especially, I believe that we pray about a lot of things. Who doesn't pray about anything? Who doesn't have a need? Okay, we all do, right? We want things to happen for us so badly. Some of us want to start businesses. Others want to graduate from school. Others want to get married. Where are my single ladies? Eh. So you guys are all married, right? Where are my single ladies? Wave at me. Wave at me. Oh, wave so that the young men will know that you are there. Where are my single gents? You are pretending there. Okay. All right. You want to get married. Others want to have kids. Some have kids and they believe, they feel like the kids have gone wayward. They are trusting God to touch them. They want God to calm them down. People, some two are married and they are unhappy. But at the end of the day, you chose, but I pray for the grace of God for you, for intervention. Somebody is also looking for a new job. Because the math is not mathing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The money is not adding up. It's like well, living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. Um, above all that I've said, I've stated to you, we play around with these two words that sometimes, if we are not careful, we may act in a certain way that is not pleasing unto God. But this morning, God wants to help somebody to have clarity. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to share with you a message that I've titled, Delight and Desire. Tell somebody, Delight and Desire. Oh, yeah. Tell somebody, Delight and Desire. Now, when you delight in something, you gain great pleasure, satisfaction, and happiness. Additionally, another meaning of delight is really to be, okay? So you can find other things in there. Now, when you desire something, it's a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. I believe that we enjoy desires more than delight. How many of us agree with me? We want things so badly that these things, if we are not careful, as a matter of fact, they fluctuate because they are based on where we find ourselves, either spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, relationally, you name it. But all these things, sometimes if you're not careful, may take precedence on us seeking the, ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Open to gen, um, Psalm number 37, verse number 4. Psalm number 37, very short word, and then we move. Delight, I like the amplified version today. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. I love this particular translation because it's the only translation that mentioned petitions in addition to desires. Hallelujah. All right. Now, you look at the first three verses, you could tell that the psalmist was worried that God People are doing evil against me. People are very bad. They maltreat me. They stab me in the back. As a matter of fact, they are pulling me down. They're looking down upon me and all of that. God, when are you going to throw your stone at them? When are you going to punish them for me? But God said that, David, do not worry about these evildoers, these people who pursue you, these people who come after you, but it do not be even envious of them. Maybe you are at that point in your life, you feel like, I started with so many people, this person is married, this person has children, I'm encouraging somebody here, yeah? this person is moving on in life, they bought a house, I'm still living in an apartment, they bought a nice car, I'm so, my car is so raggedy to the point that I have to, you know, really spend so much of my money, I don't know what exactly to do. Do, so we become very envious of these people within our surroundings to the point that if we are not careful, we may even tread on the same path that these people are treading on. But then God encouraged David and said that for these people, they wither away very quickly. 
Just as they attained whatever that they attained. So as God was uh, uh, admonishing David, he got to the point that he said that as you trust in me, now there is something that you've got to do. You have to grow in your appetite for me. David, you have to have delight in me. Things that you would you delight in, you will go all out for those things. You will actually kill for those things. You will also make your life so dependent on those things. You don't let anybody talk you out of those things. You don't let anybody convince you otherwise. You don't let anybody deceive you. You don't let anybody lead you astray because you know what you delight in. I remember one time uh, my mother-in-law visited us and noticed that I love okra a lot. Uh? And for me, it's so weird that I don't like my okra with, uh, with banku, you know, what you guys like. Yeah, 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 I'm a little weird. I like mine with Gary. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like, uh -huh. I like mine well made. Okay, all I need is to have some okra stew in the refrigerator or soup. I'm okay, I can make my own Gary. Hallelujah. So it took my mother-in-law to draw my wife's attention to the fact that this young man likes this, yeah? Because every single time I came home, that's what I went to. So now my wife has also learned that it, she will have her peace of mind when there is okra stew in the house. Are we working this together? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one that my last one just finished yesterday. So I'm praying for more. Amen. Lord, be my helper, young woman. All right. So you, 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 you see, now because I loved this so much, it was easy for my mother-in-law to pick this up. Is somebody hearing me? So, somebody, I don't want to call that my delight. Somebody may call it delight. But for me, it is something that I desire. If not anything, if there is nothing absolutely in the refrigerator, at least there got to be that there for me. Is somebody hearing me? So, when you say that you delight in the Lord, you love the things of God, people should be able to tell how much you love the Lord. So if I see you and I don't see Christ, then that means you don't really delight in the, your desires fluctuate. You remember when you first met your, your, your boo, your wife, you loved her so much. You said, uh, her vital statistics, I love her, her makeup and what have you. Now you go home, she takes off the makeup and yeah, 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 yeah. That's your pretty lady. Now the young man that you say he has sex packs and whatever, and now you realize that he begins to snore. That young man, when you saw him, he said that he has sex packs, he's six foot tall. He's a six-figure making guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say all these things. Then you realize that when you begin to live with this person, your desires begin to dwindle. When you follow only God for miracle signs and wonders, you will receive those miracle signs and wonders. But when we are looking for you, you are nowhere to be found. Because your delight is not in the law. But this year, God is going to separate the sheep from the goats. You know how he's going to do it? Nobody is going to delight in the Lord and God will turn his back on him. But those who just desire God for miracle signs and wonders, he's going to do those miracle signs and wonders for you. But when you need him to move you to the next level, he will not be there for you. Are we working on this today? So David realized that if God can do all these things for me, then I've got to stay plugged in at all times. Do you have appetite for God? Where is your appetite? Do you only talk to God when you come to church on Sunday? That's a desire. Is somebody hearing me? Do you feel God on the inside of you? Have you made him the master of your soul? Can you hear him when he's speaking? Can you feel him when he's around? But the psalmist wants to admonish us this morning that if not anything this year, 
Let your appetite for the things of God be increased. Don't take God for granted. Delight is very internal. It starts from the inside. So you realize that when David was nowhere to be found, all these desires, the delight that he had in the things of God was bubbling on the inside of him. When the time came for God to elevate him, God did not need permission from anybody. You know why you have been praying about the same old thing over and over again? Because God knows your heart. And what are you going to do when you receive those things? That's why he's taking his time until you change your mind and your attitude. Today, I just don't, I don't want to make noise. We don't speak the truth anymore. I told you the other day, this year is not pumping you up. But it is more about punching holes in you. I'm going to speak the mind of God to you. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Then I remember a young man that took delight in the things of God. Oh, come on. I can't miss this one. When you read Genesis 39, verse 11 through 12, the Bible says that Potiphar's wife wanted to move Joseph to lie with her. But Joseph, because he had delighted in the Lord, because he had serious appetite for the things of God. Uh -uh. This is a no-go zone. We live in a generation. Young men, listen to me. Look at me here. And let me tell you something. Where young men don't, do not even fear sin anymore. Instead of running, the Bible says that Joseph flee. But for us, what do we do? We embrace sin. We believe that we are so powerful to the point that I can stand the test of time. Then the Lord reminded me of another man. The Bible says that he was a Nazarite. The strongest man at the time. He was, as a matter of fact, a judge. Ladies and gentlemen, can I present to you Samson? But Bible said, Samson allowed his delight in the things of God to dwindle just for a minute to the point that he fell in love with Delilah. You see, oftentimes when we hear Delilah, we only blame it on women. Eh? Where till you meet a man who is more than Delilah? That one, how would you call him? Uh, uh, the male version of Delilah is D, right? Hallelujah. But you realize that when he embraced that move, it cost him his vision. So when you make your life more about desire, I won't, I won't, I won't, and not Digging deeper into the things of God, you open up yourself for anything to happen to you. Oh, but the Bible says that one day, one day while he was in chains, he pleaded with the Lord. It means that when you come back to your senses as the prodigal son, when you begin to draw closer to God, you receive another level of grace to move. He said, but God, give me another strength. Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. And the Bible says that God gave him strength. But guess what happened? He still died anyways. The Lord wants somebody to understand that if you do not want to wither away, then delight in the things of God. Where is your heart, child of God? Where is your heart? Another group of guys that delighted in the Lord are the Hebrew boys. I call them Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel. 
The Bible said, when you read Daniel chapter number one, when the whole city of Babylon were fasting, they brought them food, meat. But when you read Leviticus chapter number 11, the Bible says that, you see, the meat that they were given to their gods were more like pigs and donkeys and horses and all of that. But because these two Hebrew guys had not proven those kinds of meat, or they did not take delight in idolatry, they said, uh-uh, we ain't touching it. This year, if you want to meet God face to face, don't touch some things. There are red zones that you do not go to. Child of God, respect yourself. Child of God, respect yourself. The Bible says that there's a king, uh -uh, allow us. They only had vegetables and fruit. No wonder that when you eat more vegetables and fruit, where we come from, people, you give them salad and they will not eat salad. They would rather eat rice. Lord, have mercy. But after they had fasted, the Bible says that they saw their countenance was fair compared to those who even had meat. And they enjoyed the best of the meals. What am I trying to tell you? When you do not allow anything to come your way, there is no way God will also leave you hanging. You become better as a matter of fact. That's why David noticed that, ah, the more I delight in God, he helps me to chop off some unnecessary desires to draw closer to him. Now, as I bring my petition before him, because I know what his word has said, it makes it very easy for me to bring before God exactly what I need, not all that I want. So when I'm looking for a husband, I don't go to God that God give me a husband with six packs. But instead, I go to God that Lord help me to bump into a man who has the fear of God in them. A man after your own heart. Now let me give you a few things. When you delight in God, two minutes and I'll get out of your way. As a matter of fact, let me back up a little bit. When you read Psalm number 119, verse 105, the psalmist says something. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word of God is what ignites you. It increases my appetite in the things of God. Somebody will ask, how then do I increase my delight in the Lord? Have a relationship with him. Read the mind of God. And you can only find that in the Bible. David had come to realize that a lot of these days we're going to talk about the Psalms and more. There are so much. He did not, he's not the only person that wrote the whole book of Psalms. But at the end of the day, we give him credit anyways. But he knows that if the word of God light him up, it's, it's really plugged into his lamp, then his path will lead him into a place of righteousness. But this is what God wants me to share with you. When you delight in God, God delights in you, number one. Oh, I thought you would be happier than that. When you delight in God, God also delights in you. Do you know when God takes delight in you, he makes you his personal person? Oh, then the scripture, Acts 13, 22. After removing Saul, he made David king, be a king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. So when you draw closer to God, he prioritizes you. He personalizes you. How many of us believe that we are God's personal people? Yeah, yeah, it's easier said than done. Okay, what about me? You think? He takes delight in you. Number two, when you delight in God, 
He takes care of you. God takes care of you. Tell somebody he will take care of me. Tell somebody he takes care of me. Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. Is somebody overwhelmed? Delight in the Lord and he will take care of you. Is somebody frustrated? Delight in the Lord and he will take care of you. Is that when you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched. Other translation says that you will not be burned. Nor will the flame burn you. Just like the Hebrew boys again. The Bible said that when they came out of the fire, there was no sign that they had been in contact with fire. Do you know why? Because God had enveloped them. God had taken care of them. And God was still taking care of them. Tell somebody that when you delight in the Lord, come on, tell them, God takes care of you. All right, finally, when you delight in the Lord, God empowers you. Tell somebody God empowers you. Oh, come on, God empowers you. Habakkuk chapter number 3 verse 19. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on height. So I was, I was really at that place where I was like, what is this about the deer? You see, deers have something. Their feet is really made of keratin. It's a special compound. So their feet is really wide and long. So they are able to escalate to another level. They are able to move, jump around, beyond people. So that's why you realize that sometimes you can be driving on the highways before you know a deer would be from nowhere. But that's how God said he's going to make you when you delight in him. He's going to make your feet like that of the hind's feet. You will run and you will never grow weary. He's going to give you wings like that of the eagle. Somebody, if not anything this year, Allow God to be God in your life. Stop those things that get in the way of your relationship with God. And if you're able to do this, these three things will be a part of you. These three things will always be with you because he's not man that he shall lie. I pray that this week as you go by your day, Every minute, your prayer should be the Lord, increase my delight in you. Lord, increase my appetite in you. God bless you. God keep you. May he shine his face upon you. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout a big amen.